we're going to set up and run our interior and exterior door set. We have two tools, one for coping, the other for profiling. And we're going to take you through both setups. This tool set is supplied with a slant profile. The groove and tenon are a half inch wide by three quarters of an inch deep. The joint closes up tight at the faces before the tenon bottoms out in the groove. These tool sets are fixed on a sleeve with no need for you to disassemble. To change from coping to profiling requires no vertical spindle movement, just change one assembly for the other. For the cope milling operation, mount the cope assembly on the machine spindle, then fill the remaining spindle with machine spacers and fasten the spindle nuts securely. Check the clamping the tools and spin them by hand to check that they're rotating flat. Make sure you check your RPM settings and belts for the correct speed range. Wind the machine spindle up or down to set the tenon shoulder at about 16 millimeters above the table, as measured from the tip of the scoring spur on the lower tool body. We can use the right side infeed fence as a depth stop and to maintain constant material removal. The left side outfeed fence is not used for support or dimension in this cut, so it can be adjusted back farther than the infeed fence. I would suggest about a quarter inch rearward offset of the left side outfeed fence to make sure there's enough clearance from the part. Move the fence sections in horizontally to give about a quarter inch clearance from the tool and rotate it again by hand to check this clearance. Make sure you check and adjust the clearance of the cross slide fence or tenoning jig to the cutter. If you're using an anti-splinter block, wait to fasten it into place until you have checked the cut dimension. After you've completed all your cope cuts, you need to switch over to profile milling. And this changeover from cope to profile is done only by swapping the tool sets on the spindle. There should be no need to move the spindle vertically. For the fences, we need both infeed support and outfeed support, as well as removing one millimeter of material to ensure a full cut. Start by positioning the fences in line, then move the right infeed fence back one millimeter. Make sure you check the fence opening around the tools for swing room. You should have about a quarter of an inch clearance between the tool and the fence. After you feed through your first piece, check for any snipe and readjust fences as required. 